either because I never ordered it. And then she asked me for the receipt. And I'm like, man, but every penny's accounted for. Everything's done in up in order. But it's a freedom. There's a freedom that we have here at this little church that most churches do not have. I think that God's blessed the thing, man, and he's just made it work. People walk in and say, how do y'all got what you got? I don't know. Uh, it just kind of is there. You know, and, and it always works like his little camp. Uh, you know, people say, how did you, why would y'all go? You tell a couple of people, hey, let's, we need to go do this. And you got people that will drive three and a half, four hours up and three and a half, four hours back and do it. Brother, I'm telling you, I can't even begin to explain to you when you step it out. I'm going to talk about that. This is all part of the Sunday school lesson, so just hang in there. We'll get there. Uh, I bought a white van. I, saw, I gave Brother Reagan the other van. He wants to pay us for it, but I, I keep telling him it's his. I gave him the title, gave him the keys, gave him everything, said, so just get it out of the parking lot and before somebody steals the catalytic converter off of it. And he took it, and he got it up there, and he's working on it. He, he wants to pay us for it. I mean, he wants to pay me good money for it. Uh, I told him to just write the check out to me, and that'll be cool. But, but uh, he's going to write it to the church. And uh, so this new white van I got, I looked behind it. The other, they didn't have a trailer hitch. I'm like, oh, rats, man. Need a trailer hitch. I said, we're going to take this thing to camp. If I don't have a trailer hitch on it, they're going to get all mad at me. Uh, so I, I start calling all over the place in the whole wide world, and I can't find a trailer hitch anywhere for this. And so then I, I, I go, okay, give me some. I got to go to Indiana. I said, give me some junkyards in Indiana. And so I call up in junk. Now, this trailer hitch, factory Ford trailer hitch, they're five, six hundred bucks if you go to Ford to get them. I call, and in Port, Portland, Indiana, there's a, a junkyard, and he had a van in there, and he had a trailer hitch on the van. And I seen the picture online, so I called him, and he said, Yep, it's there. I said, Can you have it off? He said, Sure. He said, 50 bucks. I said, Man, I'll take it. I said, So I had to get from here, and Randall, me and him, had a talk Friday, and and I had to run him off because I had to get from here to Portland by 4, 5.30. So 4.26, 5.26, I pulled into their parking lot. And they got the trailer hitch right there for me. Andrew calls and pays for it ahead of time. And you say, how does God work all this stuff out? You, don't ask me. I can't even begin to tell you. That morning, I'm sitting down here at Lowe's. In, in, uh, I need some lights, by the way, for that cabin up there because they got to be certain lights and they got to be safe and inspection proof and all that, kid proof and all that other stuff. So I'm in Lowe's, 109 bucks for them down here. They're on clearance. I think they're $87 a piece down here. I said, I can't afford $87 a piece. I just can't. I said, Lord, I can't do it. Uh, so I head up there, and, and because I stopped there to get that trailer hitch, I, I just looked and said, is there a Lowe's anywhere near? And on the way to camp, another 26 miles is a Lowe's. And in that Lowe's, they had 13 of those lights for $27 a piece on clearance. Amen. I would have never... I would have never even went to that Lowe's if I wasn't looking for that trailer hitch. Yeah. Now, when he says, trust in the Lord with all thy heart, lean not unto that owner, saying, of all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. Well, by the way, I needed some tuba sixes, too, to, so they could put on the bed rail so the little kids wouldn't fall out and hit the floor. Guess what they had at that Lowe's? Exactly what I needed in the coal pack out there in junk wood that they said, here, I'll sell you that, too. So everything I needed was at that Lowe's. I looked all over the place, couldn't find nowhere. It's at that Lowe's. I said, Lord, you know what I need. I need what I need, and you know what I need, so I need it. And there it is, sitting right there. Then the lady comes up, the manager comes up and says, Mike, you want to say 20% more? <laughs> I'm like, I'm already, I mean, you've already given me these $109 lights for $27 bucks a piece. I mean, you can't get much cheaper than 25%, I mean, 75% off. I said, that's fine. She said, yeah, so fill out this paperwork. So I filled out the paperwork, got me another credit card. Jerry will love that one. Uh, and she gave me, it's a, it's a Lowe's consumer credit or, or a business credit card. I already had one. She said, but you can have three. I said, well, we, yeah, I said, I'll take it. She gave me another 20% off, and, and we take off out of Dodge. And, and so then I got up to the Lowe's up in uh, Warsaw because I had to go get something, and their lights up there were 80 bucks. And you sit there and say, what's the deal? It's God. Yeah. That's what it is. What you're reading right here is a, a girl named Rebecca. And Rebecca in Genesis is uh, in a place where Abraham tells Eliezer to go get a, a, son, a daughter, a wife. And Isaac's not coming back in. I don't know who sent Isaac there. Uh, he's going to go back one day, but he's not going to go back yet. I said, but Isaac, Isaac is in, I'm not going to go back. Eliezer, you got to go find somebody. And the somebody that he finds has to be willing to come back because she wants to. Not because she's made to. What's wrong with our churches today is we try to make everybody serve Jesus Christ. You can't do that. 
If somebody doesn't meet Jesus Christ personally, they'll never. The stuff I just told you about, fine, that happens to me 24 7, day after day after day after day after day of my life. That's what happens. And I see that stuff and I'm like, Lord, how in the world would you ever get me to that Lowe's just north of Portsmouth, Port, Portland, Indiana, other than a trailer that I need a hitch for? He says, You have not because you ask not. And when you ask, you ask amiss. I wasn't asking for anything for me. I was asking for 24, 25 kids that we could possibly take to camp now. That we may not, let's say, what happens if only two people show up? Well, hey, we still got, we still went to did the work, man. And I feel good about it. I was wore out, man. I tell you what, everybody was wore out. After we left there Friday or Saturday night afternoon, you talking about dragging. I mean, Joe was like, I've never seen Joe drag so much. Andrew, Andrew was dragging a little bit, but uh, he wasn't, he didn't do a whole lot either. So. Uh, we slept, we went up, but we did it the night before we, we went up there, but it's just amazing how God provides everything. And you know what that did is a testimony to that church of God camp. They watched a group of men come in there over three, three days, three days is all it took us, uh, three and a half. Cause we went up there, me and Andrew went up there uh, Friday night, but three and a half, three days, we went up there and a building that had been down for probably 10 or 11, 12 years that they had lost power on nothing. Uh, we got back up, insulated, ceilings in, beds all working, power on it, air conditioning's working, new doors and windows. You ought to see that. I mean, man, Mike and, and uh, Rich, when they put those doors and windows in, that, that whole building looks like a brand new building on the outside. When he paints it, I mean, it's still, it's a 1914, 1918 building, 1912, whatever it is. But it still, it looks a whole lot better from the outside now. And you can get in and out of it and use it. And they're tickled pink. And I'm telling you, brother, and that's a blessing. And what happens is God provides all that stuff. He'll provide, you say, well, he provided everything we needed. How can one guy say, hey, we're going to go three and a half hours? What kind of maniacs would jump in three to four different vehicles and drive three and a half hours one way and three and a half hours back to work three and a half for you? I'll everyone right there. Uh, to drive, uh, to work all day long for nothing. For nothing. I mean, if you got to go around the street and do it, that's one thing. But to, but to go three and a half hours three times, that's seven hours. That's three eight-hour trips, round trip. And they go up there, and you just say, Lord, uh, I think we should do this. And four or five guys said, we'll do it. And I'm sitting there going, just mar I just marvel. I marvel. Take your Bibles. Go to Genesis chapter 24. I want to review a couple things here real quick. First, 59. We'll start in 59. 24, 59. Brother, you're reading one of the greatest stories in your Bible. All the stories in the Bible are great. Uh, this is just as great as the next one, really. I like Samson, too. Samson's a good story. Uh, it, they're all good stories. 59, 59. Hey, where's Jerry? You're not ringing the bell for him, are you? I know it is. And I, I, was, I was cursing him today in Jesus' name. <laughs> I said, we ain't in no revival. We're about as revived as we're going to get. 49, 49, oh, 59, 59, excuse me, 24, 59. And it says right here, and they sent away Rebekah. Now, Rebekah had a choice. Uh, verse, go back to 58. And they called Rebekah and said unto her, they're asking her, wilt thou go with this man? And she said, I will go. Uh, you have to have make a choice in life sometimes. And it's not anybody else's choice. It's my choice. Nobody ever made me do anything with Jesus Christ. Nobody's going to make me do anything with Jesus Christ. Uh, nobody's going to make me serve the Lord. Nobody's going to make me not serve the Lord. I'm going to serve the Lord because I know what the Bible says. I don't care what anybody else says. I really have given up on caring what other people say years and years and years ago. Uh, I've had people come up and say, hey, you need to, no, shut up, go away and do your own thing. I, I found a man named Jesus Christ 43 years ago on a back porch in Louisville, Louisville Kentucky. And guess what? Not a single one of y'all were in that, on that back porch with me. Nobody was. And I'm sitting there, just me and him, I started having a conversation with him. And it's like he sat back like this for a while, for two or three weeks while I'm in my backyard talking to him. I don't know how long it was. It could have been a month or two. And I'm just about, hey, you in the sky. Hey, you up there. If you're really up there, you better do something for me because if I come up there, you, I said, I believe you're really up there, but you're going to do something because if I come up there, you're going to be awful mad at me. I bet you my neighbors thought I was insane. I would have thought I was insane if I looked down. Here's this guy in the backyard talking up in the sky. And uh, somewhere in the, in the process of time, I found a Bible up my attic. And I didn't even know, I thought everything says Holy Bible on the back, and that's just what it was. And I found this little white Bible, and I started reading the thing, and that thing started talking to me. 
And as I read that thing, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, it talked. It talked to my soul. And I'm like, okay. And then I would ask, and he talked. And I'd ask, and he talked. And pretty soon one night I got saved on that back porch. That's exactly what happened. That had nothing to do with anybody. I've talked to atheists. I've talked to everybody in the world. And they sit there, and, and, and when we get done, they shut their mouths. You know what this world needs? They need some people that can walk up to somebody and say, hey, look, I don't care what you do. I don't care about a stinking faggot. If they want to get saved, I'm willing to help them. Because their end is hell. Now, Bill Gates, what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole, soul, uh, whole world and lose his own soul? It's hell. I don't care how much money you got. I don't care how much you don't have. It doesn't matter. It's not about a person whether you like them or not. It's irrelevant. It's their, their eternity. And what we've done is we've looked totally at the wrong stuff. And I sit here and look at this book, and I, when I see this thing, I see Jesus Christ all over it. And I'm like, okay, Lord, I serve you because I want to serve. I serve a risen Savior. He's in the world today. Do you think he's in the world today? Really? Do you? Then why aren't you doing what you're supposed to do? People say, you're nuts going to work on a camp up there that's a Church of God camp. Well, that may be true, but there may be 24 kids that come in, and one of them may get saved. As a matter of fact, we may put 24 kids in that cabin, and nobody gets saved out of that cabin, and somebody gets saved out of another one. As a matter of fact, nobody may get saved, but boy, a bunch of kids may just get their hearts right and just get through life another day. And maybe they'll, maybe they'll survive, and, and when it's all said and done, the Lord comes and gets us out of here. Some of them will go to heaven with us. I'm sitting there going, brethren, it's, it's a whole lot more than just me. It, it, it's, it's about God. It's about the Lord Jesus Christ. We limit the Most High. We limit him because we don't believe he can. And guess what? You don't have to understand everything. I didn't have to understand that there was a Lowe's up here, and I'm going to give you, give you, give you, give you, give you to get you to do this. I'm just going to go tell you to do it. And if you go do what I tell you to do, you're going to watch me do everything, and I'm going to provide for you everything you need to do it. You know what that does for me? That makes the next job a little bit easier. And the next job a little bit easier. Why? Because I know that if he told me, and I know he told me, to do what he's telling me to do, he'll provide everything I need. And you don't have to fight with anybody. And they sent Rebecca, their sister, away. You know, they're always willing to get rid of everybody, man. A good family is one that's going to want to get rid of somebody when it's time to go. It's time for you to go. I got Esther, man. We're trying to get rid of her. One of these days, we'll get rid of her. She told me, she said, Dad, quit trying to hook me up with everybody. I said, how did you know I was trying to hook Because they're all telling me they heard you back there talking. <laughs> So I'll just come right out, and I, I'm looking for a husband for my daughter. If anybody, no. <laughs> I'm joking. I ain't going to get rid of her that quick. She still owes me some money. <laughs> Unless you want to take her de debt, and you can have her if you take her debt. But you, I don't think you want her debt. And they sent, uh, sent away Rebecca, her, her sister. What a blessing. Rebecca went, verse 59. She just went. And her nurse, and Abraham's servant, and his men. So they all head out. And I go on real quick, and they blessed Rebecca. We've been out of church for a couple of weeks. We, we let Brother Reagan come in here last week, so we had to recap some stuff. And they blessed Rebecca and said unto her, Thou art her sister, and, and she was. Be thou mother of thousands, and she was. And millions, of millions. Uh, they said there's 14,511,000 uh, Jews in the world today. That's Rebecca. That's not counting all the ones down through history that's died and everything else. Uh, they just said that on the, on, on the numbers today, uh, the polls, are, there'd be four, over 14 million. Uh, because one lady and one man did what God said do 40-something, 4,000 years ago. Now, brethren, if you don't think your life is important, what the devil wants you to see is your life is, he wants you to think you're not, you're not nothing. Here's a little girl that lived in, in a little town out there all by herself, and all she did was feed camels water and, and straw and everything else, and she ran around and did whatever she could do all day and was happy about it. And one day the Lord said, guess what? I need, a, I need a little girl that will marry this little guy over here, and those two right there are going to, Israel's going to come out of this group, and, and Jacob is going to be one of their sons, which is a little terror in the world. And he's going to have 12 kids, and those 12 kids are going to spread out, and that's going to be the nation of Israel. And 4,000 years from now, there'll be over 14 million of them on the ground. You know what they're supposed to be as priests? You know where we mess up? We forget who we're supposed to be. Okay, and then millions, and let thy seed uh, possess the gates of those which hate thee. Verse, 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 verse. She follows him. Rebecca is, has, has, now maybe I should just run over these real quick. Uh, Rebecca has completely submitted herself to Abraham's servant. She just turned herself, that's a scary thing, man. I mean, here's a guy you don't know anything about. He may have a lot of money and all, a bunch of camels and stuff, but you're going to jump on one of these camels and head out of Dodge with him? You better know some, it'd be like Sarah down here, you know all this Ginsu stuff. <laughs> Ultraman. Uh, 
<laughs> yeah, if you can do that, then you can beat up anyone. And if you got higher ground, I guess if you're sitting on a camel and you can jump off and, and jump through the air and kick them in the head and stuff, all the and, and bounce off each one of them and knock them all out. But, I mean, this girl gets on a camel and takes off. I don't care if she has her nurse with her. Uh, I mean, she does that. The servant has taken the responsibility to ensure Rebecca gets back. That's what he did. He first took the responsibility from Abraham to go get a wife for his son. Eliezer never gained nothing out of this. He was doing it for somebody else. You don't always have to gain, by the way. Uh, that's selfish, childish stuff on our part is when we think we got to gain out of this. Uh, Rebecca's journey starts and doesn't end until she arrives at her new home. That's us. Uh, I started this thing in 1940, uh, 1980, 1940, 1980 on a back porch in Louisville, Kentucky, man. I'm still on this journey, man. My journey ends in heaven one day, and that's when I get out of this place. You know what's wrong with most of us is we get frustrated and get mad, get upset, get bitter, uh, because things don't quite go the way we want to. Well, guess what? Uh, it doesn't go the way it, everybody wanted it to. Uh, Elon Musk has lots of money, but I'll bet you if you could sit down with Elon Musk, it didn't always go right with him. And, and I'll bet you with all the money he's got, it still don't go right with him all of the time. He just bought Twitter. I thought that was cool, man. What, what a weird. Isn't it strange how the world changes? I had a guy, I worked with a guy one time, and he said, Mike, stick around two or three years, and the whole everything changes, everything. Twitter was all this liberal garbage trash stuff, and now it's over here in, in a halfway conservative guy's hands. Uh, and all of a sudden, the thing could change, man, and then he could open that thing up, and, and then it could get real bad. But, I mean, you would sit there and think, oh, they all got control. Nobody's got control but the Lord. You do know that, right? I'm not saying Elon, Mu Elon Musk is, is of God. <laughs> I'm just saying everything can change at a given. Here's Russia. You would think Russia was a world power, and they can't beat up Ukraine. There's something sad with that, man. I mean, now, if you have to go from Russia down to South America or over to Australia and you got to, logistic-wise, get all your stuff down there and all your armies and all your... I got it, man, where it's going to be a little tough. But the guy next door, you're some superpower, and I'm not saying I want him to go in it, but what they're proving is that God can do it. You know who's in charge of Ukraine? A Jew. President Zelensky, is that his name? He's a Jew. The guy's a Jew. I'll, I'll bless them that bless thee, and I'll curse them that curse thee. You better watch that thing, man. That, this book is just like real stuff, man. I like it. <laughs> you say, oh, I, no, you're, just, you're just saying that. Well, then how come Russia can't beat the, the Ukraine? I bet you if Zelensky would leave the place, they'd fall in a heartbeat. Why would the guy sit around with a nation that big right on his border? Because God just put it in his heart to do it, man. But anyways, back to this. <laughs> Rebecca's journey started, doesn't end. Our lives start the day we get saved, and it, our journey ends at, at, as the bride of Christ with Jesus Christ. Uh, we follow, uh, what follows is a picture of the rapture. Here she goes, man. She gets on her camel. She's, head, she's heading home. And one day, her husband, her, her, her betrothed, Isaac, comes out in the field and just waits. And when he sees her, she lights off the candle and goes up to him. That's a picture of the rapture. Well, you're, going to, you're going to go out of here one day, brother. You're going to go. It doesn't matter what anybody thinks. It doesn't matter. It just doesn't matter. I don't care if people say, well, you believe in the rapture. No, I believe in the catching away. The rapture, the word rapture isn't in my Bible, but catching, caught up is. Because that's what I believe in. I said, now, we use the term rapture, which we should never use. We should use caught up because that's a biblical term. Because most, I try to say this as gracious as I can, most morons, uh, <laughs> They'll say, well, you believe in once saved, always saved. You believe in the Trinity. The word Trinity is not in the Bible. No, but the triune God is. And it says the Godhead. The Godhead is all three. Father, Son, Holy Ghost. That's the Godhead. Now, if we'd use the Godhead, they, they'd still find something wrong. I know they would. But, but you try to tell them, have you ever talked to somebody? And, and they say, well, you believe the Trinity. I said, well, yeah, Father, Son, Holy Ghost, Godhead. Well, you believe the Trinity. I said, the word Trinity isn't in, 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 in the Bible. I said, yeah, but the word Godhead is. Yeah, but the word Trinity isn't in the Bible. I said, but the, the Godhead is the Trinity. The Godhead, the, they, we use the word Trinity because triune three, and it makes it easier for idiots like you to understand it. I said, but it's really called the Godhead. But yeah, but the word Trinity, don't, so I don't believe in the Trinity. <laughs> I mean, it's really, if you could have, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Capital punishment, stone them. That's the person who needs to be stoned right there because there's just no hope for him. Uh, it's a picture of the rapture. Jesus tells us uh, that we're in the world. We're in the field. It's rough, brethren. It's rough. This world is rough. 
I don't know if you've seen it lately, but I mean, you go out in this world, it is rough. It is just crazy out there. And, and it's just, what it is, it's a lack of knowledge of God. It isn't, it isn't that people are all terrible. I, I think people are great. But uh, it's, it's a lack of knowledge of God, and our school systems and everything has taken it away, and they've, they've hurt people. And there's people in and out of churches all the time that come and go, and they got hurt somewhere along the line. And I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa wait a minute. Don't let, don't let somebody hurting me uh, affect my relation with Jesus Christ. I, I don't want this thing to ever go bad. This is, this is my life. From the day I got saved, 43 years, this is it. This is what's kept me going. Nothing else has. And I'm not going to let anybody take this from me. And I don't care who they are. You're not going to get it. This is mine. I, I, I got this for free on a back porch in Louisville, Kentucky. And you're not going to take it from me because this is what sustains me. It just keeps me going. Uh, toward the end of the dispensation, the Lord will come down into the field and he'll get us out of here. But he won't come all the way back to the land. Uh, until that time, Rebecca has never seen a bridegroom. I've never seen Jesus Christ. Don't ever tell me. I'm so sick of Catholics. There's Jesus inside of a building in a glass building. Look at, you look at this way. He's actually moving and his lips will move. Back and forth. I'm like, you are sick. Uh, the statue of Mary is just, look here. She's bleeding. She's crying tears. Somebody in the back is squeezing this little bowl, man. Tears coming down. Blood's coming down. There's somebody doing something. I don't, I don't trust them. I don't trust them at all. Uh, I, was in, I was in Jerusalem. And uh, we went into, uh, into a tomb where Bethlehem, where the, they said the tomb of Christ was. And they had this little castle. Uh, inside the building, it was like a marble castle about the size of those pews, all those pews together. I'm like, that really looks like the tomb they rolled a stone across to me, man. That looks like a chess piece. And uh, as I'm walking, I'm walking down the hallway. And, I mean, it's just like stone all the way from the ground to the top. And this stone wall, you ever seen those movies? You ever watch a movie or something and the and the wall just kind of opens up. It, it just pivots. Well, that's what this one did. I mean, you would never thought that this wall would ever do that because it looks like a big old block of whatever. But this thing opens up, and this, this grim reaping-looking monk come out of there. He's got his brown hood over his head like this. He just didn't have the sickle in his hand. Everything else was just, his, his eyes were all like this. And he said, come with me inside this hole, and I'll pray for you. I'm like, I ain't going in there with you or anybody else, man. I said, I don't know what's on the other side of that wall. And I said, and I definitely ain't going with you. Uh, and that's the Catholic Church. You know, see, a lot of us, you see people and you think, oh, they're in early night. No, 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 that's the real Catholic Church. And that thing is deadly as anything. That's about as demonic as you can get. Uh, but one of these days, the bridegroom, I've never seen Jesus. I've never seen him. I don't think the Shroud of Turin even exists. It, it may exist, but that's not, that's not Jesus. Uh, Jesus, when you see him, guess what? You'll know exactly who he is, and you won't have a doubt in your mind. Uh, let me flip the page. I'll get back now, just about where we were. Uh, verse 62, Isaac came from the way of the well Laroia, La Aroia, for he dwelt in the south country. And Isaac went out to, uh, out to meditate in the field at evening time and lifted up his eyes and saw, and behold, the camels were coming. So he goes out there. He's been waiting for his bride. You know what Jesus is doing right now? He's waiting for us. And there's a set time that we're going to come on our camels. And uh, I tell Beth all the time, I said, when I came to get her up here in Dayton, I had a caravan. Uh, it was a Dodge caravan, but it's still my caravan. That's the best I could do. Uh, and I didn't send Eliezer to get her. I came and got her. Uh, the Holy Ghost sent me, but that's exactly what I did. I came up here, and I didn't know I was going to get her. Uh, I had no idea that she, she I, I mean, I, they had told me that there was a young lady up here that, that was falling over backwards for me and all that other stuff, and she never seen me either, and she was willing to go anywhere I'd go, and that really was a lie. I just told all that to, to make it sound good. But, but, but when I met Beth, there was, there was, I met her in the Hansen's house. I mean, I, the first time I laid eyes on her, she was sitting there, and I can still see her right now. And, uh, I mean, it was, just, it was just like a kindred spirit right there. And uh, she, she was looking for something, and I was looking for something, and we were both looking for the Lord in our something, and we done both gave up at, about finding it. And then, boom, the Lord throws you right there in the middle of that thing. And people go out all the time and try to find something, and they don't find it. You know why? Because you're finding the wrong thing. You need to find Jesus first and get that thing settled down solid. I mean solid as a rock. And then after that, guess what? He will give you everything else. Uh, I've watched him, man. I mean, 43 years of this stuff is just unbelievable. I should not be here today. Really, I should not. I keep telling the Lord. I've been telling him that ever since we started the church. You got the wrong guy. And he keeps saying, shut up. And I keep saying, but Lord, you got the wrong guy. He hadn't made me dumb yet. Well, I am dumb, but he hadn't made me not speak yet. 
And uh, so I'm not, I haven't stopped talking. I haven't been, he hadn't, he, I, Moses, you know, Moses, it's encouraging. Moses said, I can't speak. I mean, God's getting ready to kill him. Uh, but that's a face-to-face -face encounter too. I haven't had that yet. But he says, Isaac came from the way, uh, uh, for he dwelt in the south country. And Isaac went out to meditate, and here comes the camels. Verse 64, here's where we stop. And Rebekah lifted up her eyes. And when she saw Isaac, she lighted off her camel. I'm telling you what, you're talking about an excited young lady. That's, this really, I'll bet you when she was back in, in Heron, when she was back there taking care of those camels, she was probably out there just skipping every day, doing exactly what she did. Uh, no job was too bad for her. No, she didn't care. She was, she was probably every day saying, Lord, I know, I know one day you'll take care of me. Lord, I know you'll take care of me. And she had a relationship with God somehow. It's that lady just had to have it. Uh, it, it. There's no possible way she couldn't because everything the Holy Spirit, which Eliezer told her to do, God has already revealed in her heart that that's what she needs to do. And she was willing to do whatever the next step was to the point of leaving everything behind. You know the hardest thing you'll ever do is leave your family sometimes? To do what God really, really wants you to do. Now, I'm not just saying to go out and do something stupid. I'm talking about to serve God, to serve God. Sometimes to serve God, it's going to cost you. And, and I never wanted to do that, man. Me and my family, I love all my family. They all got saved. They, when I got saved, none of them were saved, um, except my dad, and he was a drunk. And I didn't know he was saved till another, oh, man, seven years when I finally found out he was saved. I couldn't believe it. Uh, and then he turned his life around, and, but for 30 years that I was raised, 27 years old, I thought he was a drunk, the biggest drunk, a, uh, a hellion, and on his way to hell. That's exactly what I thought. None of my brothers or sisters were saved. Uh, my mom, I, she, I think she's saved. She just is stuck with that Catholic thing. But when you sit there and look at it, I mean, I, I sit there and I knew, I said, what I have found in this little book is different than what everybody else has taught. I was, I was a good little Catholic, man. I altar boy, the whole thing. I knew, I knew of God, but that's all I knew of, of. I didn't know him. Uh, I believe, I didn't think that I just happened in nature. I don't think, uh, you know, Darwin, I just read some stuff about Darwin. He's talking about the eyeball. He said, it's absurd. This is Darwin, Charles Darwin. He said, it's absurd for anyone to think that that thing happened in nature by accident. That would be absurd. That's Charles Darwin. You know what they've done is they've taken Charles Darwin and they said, okay, hey, uh, let's do, we want to teach this thing over here, evolution. So let's take Charles Darwin and take him out of context a little bit. And, and you can find things he said, like selection. Uh, natural selection is a true thing. You, I, I was telling, me and, me and Randall was talking about that the other day. You take two dogs, a long-haired dog and a short-haired dog, and you put them on the equator, and it ain't going to be long before the long-haired dog's dead. You know the only thing you're going to have left is a short-haired dog. Yep. Why? Because it's hot. <laughs> and if you go down there, guess what? You're going to get a haircut. That's just what you're going to get. Or you're going to be dead too. Or why would you think that everybody's darker the closer you get to the equator? Natural selection is hotter down there, man. If you go down there, you better take some number 10 sunscreen with you. But if you go up into Eskimo country and you take a long-haired dog and a short-haired dog, guess what? Which one's going to die up there? And that's why you have what you have. That's what Darwin was talking about. And he may have made a couple comments here and there back and forth, but the, the crust of what he said was that. And when he starts talking about eyeballs and hands and everything else, he said that's absurd for us to even think that that occurred in nature. Somebody gave an illustration of a 747 jet tore all apart in a million pieces and laid all over the desert. And I, he said, I don't care how many storms come through, that thing will never fly again. <laughs> he goes, it's absurd to think it's all going to go back together. You're going to have a 747 sitting there. That's what they think about us, and it's insane. You got to get to the place where you, you, in your heart, you know him, although you've never seen him. The first time I ever see him, I don't know exactly who he is. I don't care if there's 100,000 people standing up there, angels and everybody else, all the saints in glory. Uh, he's going to stick out like a sore thumb. That's the one I want to see right there. I want to see Jesus Christ. I want to see everybody else get out of the way, get out of the way, get out of the way. I want to see him. That's all I want right there. I just want to see him. 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 That's the one. That's the one. That's the one who talked to me in the backyard. When he shouldn't have. What he should have done was hit me with a lightning bolt in the backyard. That would have solved everybody's problem. But he didn't. I mean, I yelled out, I cried out, and he answered. People say, why do you believe like you believe? I don't know what else to do. I cried out in the backyard, and he answered you know, I've had people down in the last 43 years get so mad at me, it's pathetic. <laughs> uh, and they, I, I still can't quit, man. I still can't. I'm sorry, I can't. 
I don't have to have nothing. I, I mean, I'm perfectly happy with just him. That's Rebecca. That's supposed to be us. Rebecca is the perfect picture. Of that. Oh, brother, man, she is. Man, Jerry's back. He's got the little bell back there. I got nine minutes. Every time I look over and see him, I keep thinking of that little bell. I don't know why. <laughs> but Rebecca lifted up her eyes, and when she saw Isaac, she lit off her candle, excited. That's, you should have some excitement about it. Uh, I, I remember when I met Beth, I was just the excitement about meeting somebody that actually wanted to be with me, and I wanted to be with them. It's a crazy thing, man. Just as friends. That's all it was, as friends. Uh, verse 65, for she had said unto the servant, what man is this that walketh in the field to meet us? Uh, you won't have to ask. You won't have to ask that question. As a matter of fact, though, the man she's asking is Eliezer, which is a picture of the Holy Ghost in this thing. And, and she's asking the Holy Ghost to reveal to her which one is Christ, which one is hers. You know what he says? And the servant had said, it is my master. Therefore, she took a veil and covered herself. You should never listen to anybody else other than the Holy Spirit when it comes to Jesus Christ. He's always going to lift up his master. Eliezer could have anywhere along the line lift himself up. He didn't lift himself up at all. Zero. None. None. Zero. It's always my master. My master. My master. God the Father, God the Son, and Abraham was his master, but he knew, he knew Isaac is going to be the new master. That's my master right there. So Eliezer does. And the servant told all things uh, that he had done. Now, I'm, brother, I'm telling you what, man, 2,000 years, Jesus Christ came 2,000 years ago, died on the cross, shed his blood at Calvary, went to heaven. Uh, he came back down for 40 days, 40 nights, and, and then he shot up in Acts chapter 1, and he's been there ever since. He said, I must go that the Comforter will come. So the Comforter has to come, which is the Holy Ghost. He's, by the way, he says that the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost. So he sends the Comforter, not that you can speak in tongues. No, none of that stuff. Uh, not that you can glow, 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 glow. No, no, no. That's not what he's here for. He's here so that when you cry out, he'll take this book and he'll reveal some stuff to you. The question is, is are you going to be like Rebecca or are you going to rebel and run? If you, re Brother, I'm telling you what, it's a personal thing. He's a personal savior. It, you know what boggles my mind? There's 7.8, 7.7 or 7.8 billion people on the planet right now. And the Holy Spirit can deal with each and every one of us individually all day long, 24-7, 365 days a year for the rest of your life. And he'll get you exactly where you're supposed to be. And sometimes you won't even know you're supposed to be. You know, by the way, when I went to Lowe's up there uh, in uh, Portland, I was not looking for those lights. I was looking for those two by sixes. But I was not looking for those lights. You know, in the midst of those two by sixes with some other stuff, some one by stuff. And guess what? Mike and them guys all needed the one by stuff to do around the windows and doors and all that other stuff. So the Lord provided that. And then I just happened to be walking through electrical. And I said, I wonder how much their lights are here. When I seen $27, I couldn't believe it. I'm like, whoa, man. And there was 13 of them. I only needed four. So I grabbed them all. I, I'm, a, I'm an excessive, compulsive type of a person. Uh, four of those lights would have been uh, $440. And I got 13 of them, and one of them was bad, so I got to take it back. But I'm, I'm, you sit there and look at the thing, man. I'm like, Lord, how does this stuff happen? That's what I'm doing. And I'm sitting there looking at the thing, man. I'm like, if I go get a cart, man, will they be here when I get back? Is somebody going to be down this aisle pick them up? I'm like, Lord, I said, Lord, I need a cart. And I go around the corner, there's a cart, and I come right back. And there ain't no, I was going to jump them if they did get them into my lights. But, but you sit there, and it's like the Lord. And Rebecca looked up. She's just excited. I do that everywhere I go. I just get excited, man. I, I get excited to watch what God's going to do. Simple little things, man. It don't have to be something complicated. I like the big ones too, believe me, brother. I like people getting saved. I like watching somebody turn their life over to Jesus Christ. I like people fighting a fight and getting through that thing. I, li I like that, man. My friends were all Navy SEALs. I like that. I just like, I like men being men. I like ladies being ladies. I think there's nothing sweeter than a lady and nothing more masculine than a man, but I hate this thing in the middle there somewhere. I, I, don't, I can't figure that thing out. Uh, I like somebody who knows what they're doing and they do it. Uh, I mean, we got up there and what a blessing was is everybody was doing their own things and we got the job done. You know what I hate is have to sit there over somebody's shoulder and tell them what to do. Why well, get out of the way and I'll do it, man. Just leave me alone. But the Holy Spirit, when you get the Holy Spirit in your life, guess what? He'll guide and direct your steps. Trust in the Lord with all that heart. That's my favorite verse. If you ask me to sign your Bible, that's what I'm going to sign up. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Trust in the Lord with all thy heart, lean not on thy understanding, and all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct the path. You know what I know? Jeremiah says it's not within man to direct the step. You can't do it. 
You may think you can, and boy, I tell you what, you know what the devil do? He'll throw a bunch of ideas out there. Oh, I can do this, I can do this. How's that working out for you? Uh, it never did work too good for me. I gave up on that a long time ago. Uh, you know, I, you know, I wake up in the morning, and I do in the morning what I'm supposed to do today, and I get through the day, and when the day's over, I shut my eyes and go to bed, and I wake up tomorrow morning and do that. And I, you know what I found out? That's more complicated, and that's pretty much more complicated than I want to get anyways. Uh, and Isaac went out and meditated, and she gets off the candle. So uh, verse 65 says, For she had said unto her servant, and the Holy Spirit told her. Verse 66 and the servant told Isaac all things. He starts talking. You know what the Holy Spirit's job is on this planet? It's nothing more than this. He convicts of sin, righteousness, and judgment. He tells you that you're a sinner. Whether you're saved or lost, it doesn't matter. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Every one of us has. Paul includes himself into that. And then, then he convicts us of righteousness. He shows us God's righteousness. And what once I got saved, I got the Lord's righteousness. He took my sin on him. And then of judgment. There's a day coming there's judgment coming. You know what the Holy Spirit, uh, Eliezer is sitting there talking to uh, Isaac and saying, hey, man, let me tell you about this journey I just took. I got on my camels, man, and me and the guys headed out Dodge, and we thought we were going to get beat up and banged up somewhere, but we, were new, we, were new, we knew we were on a mission. <laughs> I like missions. Man, I always like my ship. I, I like the ship because you got under. I loved it. I'd park my car way back in long-term parking every day in Norfolk, Virginia, every day. People say, you're sick. Yeah, I'm, I was a sick puppy, man. I would park it way back there. I'd lock it up. I'd go down the pier. I would walk up that brow, and I'm expecting the worst. That ship is going to get underway here in a few minutes. And it's not supposed to get underway for a long time, but I'm going to go up there, and they're, not going, to, they're going to let you on. They're going to let you off. And you're going to get underway, and I'm like, Arr, Captain, let's get underway. They say, Ellie, you are sick. I'm like, no, I'm a sailor, man. And, and I had old senior chief tell me, ships, uh, sailors belong, uh, let's see, uh, uh, let's see. Sailors, I forgot that saying, man. I've been out so long. I need to go back to boot camp or something. Sailors belong on ships, and ships belong at sea, and your wife didn't come in your sea bag. I'm like, yeah, that's cool, man. I said, so when I get on a ship, I mean, I'm, I'm theirs. I'm his. I'm the captain's. I'm, I'm, I'm theirs. That's it. Let's get underway. The ship is no good in port, by the way. There's no fun in port. The fun is when it's out at sea, man. That's where you have all the trials and tribulations and rolling and rocking and throwing up and puking and, and everybody's sick and, and misery and agony and they that go down to sea in ships. How are you going to learn that stuff if you don't go to sea, man? You got to go to sea. You got to get out there somewhere. You ought to, don't, don't come up and tell me you're going to join the Navy because then I'll call you crazy, man. You're out of your mind. But if the Lord's in it, you ought to do whatever he says. But in the service, started telling Isaac. He said, man, I got on that camels. Man, he's going to ring the bell here. You didn't ring the bell. It's, it's, see, you got to tell everybody exactly what to do. Uh, <laughs> but, but, but you, you made me lose my thought, man. You rang the bell on me. <laughs> I'll get it right back. I'm gonna. You, I got a minute, anyways. But he started talking, man. I got on camels and I, I headed to Heron. And, and all the way there, man, he goes, I, just us three. I knew we had a fellowship, all three of us. And, and I knew that when I got there, God was going to give me what you wanted. And I got there, man, and it's exactly what he did. He gave me, he gave me, I mean, right. He goes, Abraham, can I, you can't believe it, man. I got right to this well, all these camels, and they're thirsty, man. Their little humps are gone. They always say that the camel's hump is full of water. And when it, it, they get out of water, they start diminishing. That hump goes down. I don't know if that's true. I've never seen a thirsty camel. But, but when you sit there and look at, at those camels, you go, they were all thirsty, man. Here comes this little girl out here. And she looks at me, and here's a whole line of camels. And I'm sitting there saying, Lord, you know, if I just say this, 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 like, Lord, I need some tuba sixes. And all of a sudden, there's a whole stack of them. Ask Andrew. Andrew's sitting right there. Did we not pull up in that Lowe's, and they were right there? I'm like, well, check that out, man. That's exactly what I need. Then the lights are inside. I didn't even know they were in there yet. But everything was in that one place. You know what Eliezer said? I, Lord, if I, I'm going to get here and... If I can find that little girl, if I can find somebody to come out and, and say, uh, oh, well, can I have a drink? Yeah, and then I'll water your camels also. And he said before he got the words out of his mouth, that little girl says, hey, here, take a drink and I'll, I'll water your camels too. I'm like, whoa, check that out, man. He's probably saying, did you make my trip that prosperous this early? That's the Holy Spirit. He's starting to tell Isaac, you know what the Holy Spirit's going to do? One day he's going to, him and Jesus Christ are going to sit down and they're going to start talking. And the Lord already knows what he's done, but boy, he's got a story to tell and he's going to tell it. And he's going to go on. He's, he's going to convict us. He convicts me of sin. You know why you get convicted of sin? Because the Lord wants his bride to be cleaner. He wants you to see that you're a righteous person. You're it, man. You're it. If you're saved in this room today, you're it. You're it. 
tag you're in. You're going to be with him forever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever. And the Holy Spirit's going to be right there with you ever. Why not just give up and like it, man? I mean, that's just, I don't know why people fight the thing. Uh, I fight it too. I, there's things I, I don't want to do all the time, but you just do. He can fix men of sin. I've got one more thing I'm going to say. I've got about 10 more I want to say on that line, but he uses the, uh, all through history, if you do any Bible reading at all, and I'll stop here. This will get you through the week, Lord willing. Peter, James, John, Paul, uh, all of them, all of them. When you start reading your Bible, some of those men lived, I mean, they, they were just destroyed, distraught, beat up, banged up. But when you get to read their Bible, if I read 1st and 2nd Peter, you know what that does? It encourages me. It helps me go on. So here my brother Peter, 2,000 years ago, had to go through what he went through, but he got to a place where he didn't quit, and he wrote two books in the Bible. And 2,000 years later, here's this little kid reading those books, and, and those things are helping me through. <laughs> That's the Holy Spirit. You know what it did? The Holy Spirit used him back there to write the books, and he, he uses me up here to read the book. And all the way through history, everybody got to, got to use this stuff. He uses it. That's what the Holy Spirit's job is. He's telling him, said, man, he says, Lord, after you left, you told him I was coming back. Sure enough, I went back down there, and boy, did they need help. Peter was a mess. Lord, and he starts talking about it. I mean, could you hear the story that, that the Holy Spirit, if you had the conversation, Eliezer and Isaac is having that conversation. It was probably two or three hours before he finally got Isaac uh, back to the place because he was, he, the story just enthralled. You know what Jesus Christ is? He's, he's concerned about everything in our lives. Every single facet of our lives he's concerned with. He's concerned. I'm thinking, <laughs> who could I find a friend like that? What a friend we have in Jesus. Oh, where, where are you going to find a friend like that? Man, I said, well, we got a song book here with all those songs in it. Every one of those, but you know what they found? They found Jesus. I better stop. Jerry's going to ring me out here in a minute. Father, thank you for your blessings this morning. Didn't get too far, Lord, in this, but it's, it's just such a good story. Lord, yeah, I could just stay here in Genesis chapter 24 for the rest of my life. There's so much stuff sitting here. But, Lord, every chapter of the Bible is the exact same way. Some of them we don't understand, Lord. Some of them are a little more complicated as you go down through there. But, Lord, they're all the same. They're written by you. Uh, the, the hand of the Holy Spirit was on the men who wrote them. And, Lord, they wrote things that you wanted us to know. And, Father, thank you for that. Today we're holding the Bible in our hands that we can read about you and learn a little bit more. Lord, this world has nothing to offer me uh, like you have. And, Lord, uh, you've already given me everything at, at salvation on the back porch. You gave it to me. Lord, I've just been learning the rest of it as I've been going along this journey, and thank you for it. Bless this morning, bless the morning service, and we'll praise you in Jesus' name. Amen.